fast and accurate 12 lead ECGs with Tim Phelan. Oh, hi. We're on a 911 car right now. It came in as a 45 year old male complaining of some, some heartburn, maybe some chest pain. Wife says he started to feel a little sicker. Could be anything from indigestion to acute myocardial infarction or a lot of things in between. But you know, this is a 12 lead video and I'm doing it, so it's a pretty safe bet. This poor guy's gonna be having an acute myocardial infarction. Why don't you come along with us and we'll show you how to do a 12 lead EKG. You ready? Let's go. Tim Phelan is a seasoned paramedic with 27 years in EMS. An internationally known author and educator, he has trained more than 35,000 paramedics and nurses on diagnostic 12-lead ECGs. That's me. I'd like to bring up a couple of key points before we go back to that patient call. In 2005, at a major scientific conference, it was concluded that the 12-lead ECG is central to the initial triage of patients with possible acute coronary syndromes, or ACS. From that scientific conclusion, the American Heart Association declared in their 2005 guidelines that routine use of 12-lead out-of-hospital ECG and advanced notification is recommended for patients with signs and symptoms of ACS. These guidelines build on the recommendations from the American College of Cardiology, the American Heart Association, and the Canadian Cardiovascular Society regarding the early identification of ACS patients with ST-elevated myocardial infarction, or STEMI. So you can see, as always, a lot of thought has gone into this. Now let's get back to that patient call. 12-lead ECG is a routine part of the assessment of a patient with possible ACS. Included with the history, symptoms, and vital signs, the 12-lead ECG is critical to the diagnosis and treatment of the cardiac patient. No. Tell me again what you were doing when the pain started. Explain the procedure and reassure the patient. Remove the clothing on the upper body. Wipe the electrode sites with a brisk dry rub. Oily, dirty, or diaphoretic skin should be quickly cleaned with an alcohol like wipe. This is all really routine, standard stuff. Allow the skin to dry before placing the electrodes. If necessary, shave or clip hair on electrode sites. There you go. The ECG is best obtained with the patient resting in the supine position lying as still as possible for the 10 to 15 seconds required for the ECG device to acquire all of the information. If the patient is uncomfortable or having difficulty lying flat, place him in a low sitting position and make a note on the ECG printout. The American Heart Association's 2005 guidelines affirm that out-of-hospital paramedics can acquire and transmit diagnostic quality ECGs to the receiving hospital for advance notification of the arrival of a patient with ACS. A diagnostic 12-lead ECG can be transmitted to the receiving ED and alert other key members of the cardiac team simultaneously. The cath lab can then be prepared for your patient on arrival, saving minutes, saving heart muscle. Well, you get the basic idea. But I would like to take a minute to go over a couple of key points. First, scene time. Studies and experience have shown that getting a 12 lead ECG does not prolong scene time. So don't be concerned about that. Second thing, getting a 12 lead really is pretty easy. Once you've done a few of these, you'll see for yourself. The truth is, the skills you've learned already are far more difficult than 12 lead acquisition. And remember, getting a 12 lead makes a difference on scene, en route, and arrival at the hospital. Of course, to be valid, it absolutely has to be done correctly. So, let's talk about ECG monitoring in general. Everyone is familiar with leads one, two, and three. You learned about them in school, you've been using them for years on your job. And when you've used them, you did it for the purpose of identifying cardiac rate and rhythm. Now, each one of those leads is a view of the heart. Each one of those three leads has a single positive, a single negative electrode, and a ground. The actual view of the heart is seen from the positive electrode toward the negative electrode. That's why each of the complexes have a slightly different configuration. The ground electrode helps to reduce electrical interference and helps produce a clear tracing. 
To get a 12 lead ECG, we must isolate only the heart's electrical signal. The human body and external environment have many sources of electrical signals. The electrocardiograph can detect and reproduce the various electrical signals of cardiac conduction. The monitoring frequency response mode provides a 0.5 to 40 Hz view of cardiac conduction, while the diagnostic frequency response mode provides a 0.05 to 150 Hz window. This broader frequency bandwidth accurately reproduces cardiac electrical data necessary for diagnostic interpretation of the status of the myocardial muscle, which may be reflected in the ST segment of the cardiac ECG complex. The ST segment is found in the lower end of this electrical frequency window. An accelerated rate of play is assumed as the eligible receiver runs a complicated pattern down field. The two backs protect the center and a lane is aimed at angle A. The elevation of the plane is... Whoa, whoa! Time out. That's the textbook version of frequency response. Here's the real world version. You see, the difference between 3-lead monitoring and 12-lead monitoring is not the number of wires coming out of the machine. The difference is frequency response. In monitor quality, the machine is not attempting to reproduce the full spectrum of cardiac electrical activity. Instead, it's just focusing in on the center portion so it can see the QRS complex so you can do rate and rhythm. In the process, it's filtering out some artifact, which makes the ECG clearer. That's terrific. But you cannot do this for ST-segment analysis because in monitor quality, you can't see the ST-segment properly. That's why the 12-lead has to be done in diagnostic quality. In diagnostic quality, the machine is able to see the full spectrum of cardiac electrical activity. Not only the QRS complex, but the ST-segment as well. You notice that the artifact is seen a little more clearly as well, but because we need to see the ST-segment, all 12-leads must be done in diagnostic quality. The 12 views of the heart are taken with 10 electrodes. The four limb lead electrodes do not require precise anatomical placement. However, it is best to avoid sites that have a lot of hair, large muscles, or bony prominences. The upper limb electrodes can be attached anywhere along the arms, from the wrist to shoulders, as long as they are off of the torso. The lower limb electrodes may be attached anywhere from the ankles to the thighs. The four limb electrodes provide a total of six leads, leads 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, and AVF. All limb leads provide a view on the vertical or frontal plane of the body. The 12-lead ECG adds six views through electrodes placed on specific points on the chest wall. These chest leads, also called precordial or V-leads, provide a view on the horizontal plane of the heart. The international standard for 12-lead placement requires that the limb leads be positioned on the limbs and not the torso. In reality, however, some emergency departments obtain the limb leads from the patient's torso. In that case, you may opt to do the same for the sake of consistency. So while there may be some variation in limb lead placement, there can be no variation in chest lead placement. The chest lead electrodes must be obtained from their specific anatomic landmarks. Let me show you. Find the second, third, and fourth intercostal space. Position the electrode for V1 just to the right of the sternum in the fourth intercostal space. V2 goes in the corresponding intercostal to the left of the sternum. Skip V3 for the moment. V4 goes in the midclavicular line, fifth intercostal space. V3 is positioned between V2 and V4. The V5 electrode is horizontally level with V4 in the anterior axillary line. V6 also horizontally level with V4 in the mid-axillary line. Notice we did the 12-lead ECG on the scene. This was very intentional. For a variety of reasons, the ECG may change quickly, and the early tracing may provide very valuable information. Let's take a look at some tracings. The first shows gross and obvious changes. The second tracing was obtained from the same patient only a few minutes later, and the changes have all but disappeared. That's why it's important to get the first ECG with the initial set of vital signs. Get a repeat ECG every five to 10 minutes, or at least with each change in patient condition. Here we go again. This time, it's a 54-year-old woman complaining of some weakness and back pain. Looks like we're gonna do another 12 lead. Hello, can we call the paramedics? Hello? Oh, there she is. Well, hello there. Women are at high risk for acute coronary syndromes. You will often face the challenge of correct electrode placement on the woman's chest while trying to preserve her modesty. 
begin by explaining the procedure to the patient. Remove clothing on the upper body and cover as much as possible with the gown or towel. The electrodes are placed in the same anatomical landmarks as on your male patients. Place the limb lead electrodes as described previously. Prepare the skin for the chest electrodes. On women, the chest electrodes must be placed under the breast rather than on the breast for an accurate ECG. Place V1 on the right side of the sternum at the fourth intercostal space. V2 is also placed at the fourth intercostal space to the left of the sternum. The V4 electrode is positioned in the fifth intercostal space on the midclavicular line underneath the breast. Place V3 directly between V2 and V4. V5 and V6 are placed level with V4 on the anterior axillary and mid-axillary lines. The 12 lead is now ready to be acquired, printed, and included with your patient documentation. Well, was I right? This is pretty easy, huh? Now, we've given you most of the 12-lead acquisition story, but we haven't yet given you a whole thing. Now, there are some subtle differences between getting a good, clear EKG in the emergency department and getting a good, clear EKG in the pre-hospital setting. So what we have to do now is look at some tips and techniques that are necessary to ensure good, quality tracings in the pre-hospital environment. Even with good patient preparation, you may occasionally encounter some difficulty getting a clear ECG tracing. Artifact or electrical noise can distort and obscure the ECG waveforms. To avoid this, eliminate all patient and cable movement. A dried out or expired electrode may also be the source of artifact. Another possible cause of a poor ECG tracing is electromagnetic interference. Something as simple as setting your radio near your 12-lead setup or patient can cause this interference. If you see this pattern, remove or turn off any source of electrical interference. Common sources of interference include cellular phones, electric blankets, radios, poorly grounded hospital beds, and power cords. Obtaining a tracing with a straight isoelectric line is essential for accurate 12-lead ECG interpretation. A wandering baseline is often caused by a loose electrode, patient movement, or for movement during transport. The following may help you prevent or correct tracing problems. Check all electrodes for expiration date and fresh gel. Provide good skin prep. Coach your patient to hold his breath or breathe quietly during ECG acquisition. Reassure your patient to relax with his limbs resting and well supported. Consider stopping the ambulance while acquiring the ECG. Always place the monitor in diagnostic mode for printing. Secure all cable connections and make sure the cable has some slack. Check for cracked or broken cables. Remove or turn off all sources of electrical interference during ECG acquisition. By understanding the principles of ECG acquisition and consistently using correct technique, you will most often get a clean and accurate 12-lead ECG. Well, there you have it. We've shown you where to position the electrodes. We've talked about the difference between monitor and diagnostic quality. We've identified some tips and techniques to get a good, clear ECG in the pre-hospital setting. We've shown you some areas where troubleshooting may be necessary. We've even demonstrated how to get a 12-lead ECG on both a male and a female patient. Pretty good for such a short video. Now you're ready to go out and do it. Remember, a 12-lead ECG is a little procedure that can make a big difference in our acute coronary syndrome patients. Thanks for watching.